My name is Miguel Sepulveda, and I'm the author of Josefina Cannot Make Round Tortillas. And it's illustrated by a good friend of mine we taught at the same school. Her name is Maria Alicia Martinez. And I'm going to read certain parts of this book. It's a chapter book. There are 13 chapters. So I'm going to read parts of each chapter, and I hope you enjoy the book. Chapter 1, Teach Me Mama. The full moon, bright and beamy, in the night sky, waits for dreamers and their dreams. On this night, ten-year-old Josefina sits on the front porch swing, with a cool breeze blowing gently on her face. She gazes at the moon and dreams of doing great things. Great things like being an astronaut, or maybe an artist, or who knows, maybe even president. Hmm. President Josefina, that sounds pretty good. Inside the house, Josefina's father and mother are cleaning up after supper. The family has finished eating one of Mama's specialties, mole with rice and beans. Josefina's 12-year-old twin brothers, Jose and Lupe, are in their bedroom playing video games, one of their favorite activities. The twins' other favorite activities include playing soccer and teasing Josefina until she loses her temper. As Josefina looks at the moon, the aroma of fresh tortillas lingers on the front porch. Josefina imagines the moon as its giant craters and dark shades as one gigantic tortilla cooking on a huge black grill. The moment is interrupted by Mama calling, Josefina, it's time to come in and get ready for bed. You have school tomorrow. The moon will still be there tomorrow night. Josefina takes one last look at the moon and wonders whether someone will flip it so she can cook on the other side. She gets up from the porch swing and goes inside the house. And she blurts out, why not? Why not what, Josefina, Mama asks. Josefina skips to her mother and replies, Mama, can you teach me to make tortillas? I really want to know how. I don't see why not, Josefina. You are 10 years old, and that is how old I was when my mother taught me to make tortillas. That night, Josefina lies in bed and whispers, tomorrow, I will make the best tortillas ever. She then falls into a peaceful sleep. Mama teaches Josefina the importance of kitchen safety and the importance a mother has in the home. Finally reaching her house, she flings open the door and yells, I'm here, Mama. Let's get started making tortillas. Mama laughs and says, put your books away and come into the kitchen. I'm finishing making supper. It's cooking on the stove and will be ready when your father comes home. A mama hugs Josefina and says, first, we will have to learn some important rules. Safety. Safety, will it take long, moans Josefina? Well, safety is important, and mama teaches Josefina about the stove and other important matters. And also, like I said, the importance of a mother and home. Mama reaches for Josefina's hands and holds them tenderly. One day, you'll have a family of your own. And it is the work of these hands that will show them love. Josefina smiles and says, thank you, Mama, for teaching me. Of course, I'm your mother. Let's get started. Chapter 3, Good Ingredients and Plenty of Practice. Mama measures out the ingredients for tortillas into a large mixing bowl. She puts in flour, baking powder, lard, salt, and warm water. Mama explains, Josefina, ingredients are very important. You have to have the right ingredients and the right amount of each ingredient. Now mix all the ingredients together until you form a masa. Josefina eagerly digs her fingers into the bowl of ingredients. She kneads the dough by squeezing, turning, squishing it to make her first masa. And then Josefina has to learn how to get the right amount of masa to make masa balls and roll her first tortilla. And she finds out it's more difficult than she ever imagined. She cannot make a round tortilla. But Mama is very encouraging. Mama puts her hand on Josefina's shoulder and says, it's a matter of practice. Don't give up. Chapter 4, Twin Brothers, Double Trouble. While Josefina is learning to make tortillas, Josefina's brothers are outside playing soccer. Soon the boys smell the aroma of fresh tortillas coming from the kitchen. Jose turns to Lupe and says, I heard Mama telling Papa this morning that Josefina will be learning to make tortillas today. Let's go and see if she'll give us some. Yes, I'm hungry. Let's go, says Lupe. The boys enter the house through the back door, which leads into the kitchen. Once in the kitchen, the boys see Josefina's tortillas and begin laughing. 
Jose laughs the loudest and shouts, those are the funniest looking tortillas in the world. Nobody would ever know that they are tortillas. Are any of them round, chuckles Lupe? Jose and Lupe look at each other and laugh hysterically. These tortillas are not for you anyway, Josefina shouts back. And I'm making different shapes because I want to. Josefina then picks up a masa ball and throws it at Jose and Lupe. They quickly duck. The flying masa ball misses the boys and hits the wall. And they continue fighting until Mama stops them. And also Papa comes back from work and encourages Josefina. And of course the boys are sent out to the backyard, but they come back. And this is the last paragraph. Mama gives the children a stare, also serves as a warning to, to not misbehave because her and Papa are about to go see her favorite novella. So far, everybody is doing fine as long as both parents are there. After a short silence, Jose responds, okay, we'll get along. Lupin and Josefina nod in agreement. Good, Mama replies. Mama and Papa look at each other and smile. They get up from the table and go into the living room to watch their novella. Teasing twins. Jose smacks his lips and glances around. He sees that Papa and Mama are out of sight and possibly out of hearing range since Mama usually turns the TV volume up. Jose smiles at Lupe and then whispers loudly enough for Josefina to hear, though he acts as, she, as if she can't hear. I don't know what we just ate. Lupe giggles and joins the game by whispering back, yeah, it almost tasted like, like, like a tortilla. It didn't look like a tortilla, Jose Snickers. <laughs> Lupe is still giggling and barely able to maintain his composure as he says, if it didn't look like a tortilla, it couldn't have been a tortilla. That's the last time you'll eat my tortilla, Josefina yells. She decides Jose and Lupe are not out of range. She rears back and throws a handful of masa balls. Josefina reloads and launches another array of masa missiles. It's a direct hit. Jose and Lupe start yelling and flinging their arms in the air as masa balls bombard them. Papa goes to talk to the boys in the backyard and he gives them some consequences. He says, Josefina will be making tortillas for two weeks, maybe more, and you will not have any. You will have to use bread for your tacos in the morning. And the boys complain, but bread gets soggy and it breaks. And the Papa says, those are the consequences. Keeping one's composure. While in school, Class was all quiet, they were working on the math. She blurts out, I'll show my brothers and the whole world what I can do. My tortillas will be the roundest ever. <laughs> of course, this embarrasses her. And the teacher, Miss Martinez, asks, is everything okay? Josefina's face is red and says, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. I will get back to work. Chapter seven, a war begins at breakfast. Two weeks have gone by. The boys are still eating tacos with soggy bread. One morning, Jose finally asks, Mama, when are you going to make tortillas again? Yeah, Lupe adds, we are tired of eating bread with messy tacos. Mama turns to Josefina and asks, how much more time do you need? Josefina looks at her brothers. She gives them the glare that Mama does not see. And Josefina says, another week. <gasps> yes, I need another week. Well, the boys are furious. After breakfast, they go to the backyard and they kick that soccer ball really, really hard. Jose is looking at the soccer ball as it rolls in the backyard after Lupe's tremendous kick. He gives it one more kick toward the fence and then concludes, we need to get even with her. That's right, we need to get even, agrees Lupe. The boys have had their fill of messy tacos and Josefina's attitude. Breakfast has just finished and a war has just begun. War Plans, Chapter 8. The boys are trying to get back at Josefina without getting in trouble. So they determine they will embarrass her, not at home, but at school. They are going to use her tortillas in a science project. And they have to work really, really hard at sneaking Josefina's tortillas out of the kitchen. But it's finally done. Two more days pass and the boys finally have their tortillas. They work on their science project in the backyard behind a large tree. It's truly a top secret operation. They take turns being on the lookout for family members. Should anyone approach, the boys have a big pile of leaves to cover the science poster board quickly. They also have a soccer ball for a quick game to distract viewers from the leaf covered poster board. The best spies in the world could learn a thing or two from Lupe and Jose. Lies, revenge, and guilt. Lupe and Jose have to take the science project out of the house. 
In order to do this, they have to tell lies. And they had no idea it would hurt them this much. Their dishonesty is beginning to take a toll on their conscience. They never before told such bold-faced lies to their parents, or for that matter, to anyone else. I feel awful, mumbles Jose. Me too, responds Lupe. I didn't think it would feel this bad to lie to Mama and Papa. And we also lied about, about the tortilla smell in our room, adds Jose. The brothers look more miserable than ever. Finally, Lupe declares, that's enough. Let's not think about it anymore. Is it right that we eat messy tacos? Is it right that Jose Josefina keeps us from eating tortillas? Lupe straightens up and declares, we have our rights. We're doing what we have to do. So the boys, are they're trying to quiet their conscience, but it doesn't work very well. Chapter 10, the science fair. As all the students are getting ready, Jose and Lupe have their project in the school cafeteria, and it's entitled Objects from Outer Space. And they have a questionnaire, with four questions. Question one, where could they have come from? Of course, they're referring to Josefina's tortillas. What are their functions? Number three, what type of creature made them? And question four, what does the creature look like? Well, Josefina enters the cafeteria and notices a lot of laughter, and she says, I'm going to go see what people are laughing at. And the closer she gets, she realizes it's her brother. She says, well, they have a science project. How, how could they have a science project and the family not know? And the closer she gets, she realizes that they're making fun of her through her tortillas. What in the world? She cannot believe what she's seen. Her tortillas displayed on a science poster board. Josefina realizes her brothers are making fun of her again and in front of the whole school. Her face is red with anger and her mind is screaming. How could they? How could they? How could they? Josefina realizes that though they're making fun of her, her, her tortillas and her, the other students don't know that she made those. But she, she makes her way out of the cafeteria and runs all the way home. And she's crying and sobbing at her pillow. And her mom comes to comfort her. Mama is saddened by the pain her crying daughter is feeling and by the meanness of her son's actions. Disappointed and anger grow in her heart before she thunders. They have disrespected the family. And that leads to chapter 11. Jose and Lupe's sorrow. Jose and Lupe have realized they have done wrong. They underestimated the effect of their war plans. I'm scared to go home, mutters, mutters Jose. I think uh, we overdid it with Josefina. Well, maybe we don't have to go home, mumbles Lupe. What do you mean? Well, maybe we could join the Marines or something. That sounds like a good idea, but I think the Marines don't accept 12-year-olds. Oh, I guess not. So they go home and they have supper and Josefina's not there and they get scolded and reprimanded by their father and their mother and they receive many consequences. Lupe and Jose are truly sorrowful. They are sobbing and crying. Lupe starts breaking down with small sniffles. I'm sorry I lied to you and, and Papa. The trash bag was carrying, we were carrying, had the science poster board inside. There really was no school recycling project. I'm sorry for lying about the taco in the bedroom too, admits Jose sorrowfully. Lupe begins to sob heavily me too. I'm sorry for all the lies I told. Jose also begins sobbing heavily. He gasps for air between sobs and declares, we are the worst sons and brothers in the world. Well, Mama and Papa realize that their sons are sorrowful, but they still get consequences. They give them hugs and say, we love you, but you must learn to respect your sister and the family. Josefina Dreams, Chapter 12. Josefina is falling asleep and is wondering, will I ever learn to make round tortillas? As she falls asleep, she has a dream where she's in her favorite spot, the front porch and the swing. And she hears music inside and she goes inside into the kitchen and she shakes her head, she can't believe it. She sees tortillas dancing all over the kitchen. They're dancing a cumbia on the tables, on the chairs, on the window sills. And they're saying that they're enjoying themselves. They're having a good time. And Josefina says, how can you enjoy yourselves? You're not even round. Are we supposed to be round, ask a square one? What should we do, ask our, an oval tortilla? A cloud-shaped tortilla begins to cry. Its tears hiss and steam on a hot grill. 
So even in her dream, Josefina is having some, some difficulty, but she learns an important lesson. It's the ingredients that count. It does not matter the shape. They are still good tasting tor tortillas. And she says, let's not be sad. Let's, let's dance again. So they turn on the music and everyone is enjoying themselves. She says, this has been a wonderful dream. Now it's time to wake up. It's a new day, chapter 13. Josefina wakes up and it's a new day. Birds are singing outside her bedroom window. The early morning sun's rays shine gently into her room. Josefina feels so refreshed and so alive. She hears her brothers outside. She opens her bedroom window and calls them. And they have sincere apologies to, other, to each other. Josefina actually apologizes first and says she apologizes for them having to eat tacos with bread an extra week. Things seem to get patched up between all of these. And this is what Josefina says. By the way, your science project was a little funny. And Josefina offers them some bean tacos. She says they'll be ready in about 20 minutes. When they're ready, she calls out, they're ready. The tacos are ready. Yeah. All right, cheers, Jose. Last one is a rotten egg, Lupa says. Both boys run as fast as they can to the kitchen and reach the back door at the same time. They're laughing and making lots of noise. Mama and Papa hear all the commotion and enter the kitchen. What's going on, Mama asks. Yes, what are you up to, Papa demands. It's all right, Papa. I told them I would make some bean tacos for them, Jos Josefina explains. Jose and Lupe are smiling. We apologize, says Lupe. Jose nods. Yes, we apologize and we are friends again. Mama looks at all her children. They're all smiling at her. Now this is what family is about, she says. I couldn't agree more, Papa says. I think I'll have a taco too. The whole family sits at the kitchen table and Josefina starts passing out the tacos. Can I have a triangle tortilla, Jose asks. Sure you can, responds Josefina. I'll take the square one, says Lupe. The Abraham Lincoln looks pretty good to me, says Papa. And I'll have the cloud one, Mama says, laughing. <laughs> and that's the end of the story of Josefina cannot make round tortillas. I would like to thank the Driscoll Health Plan for inviting me to share my book with you. If you want any information about my book, it's on Facebook, uh, Miguel's Books, and you can find information about me and my book. It's been a pleasure sharing this with you.